Hey there. Hey, I got uh, my big cast iron mess cleaned up. And it took a little while, but I cleaned a few other things up and uh, kind of got this place a little more ship shape. And uh, I got some really small screws to make. Um, on the axle sun over here, I've made uh, screws as small as 12, 24. And I've got some even smaller screws to make. And I think it'd be a lot easier to do on the Monarch 10 E. Probably get a little better results too. But anyway, here's the uh, axle sun all cleaned up <laughs> of cast iron chips. I'm going to show you something interesting about these old lathes that you might not know. Now, with a, uh, I, got a, I got a tape here. Now, going against the face of the chuck, and that's a direct mount 8 inch chuck. With a dead center, I can squeeze 36 inches between, you know, with a live center, it looks more like 34. And uh, now the distance, the carriage here is all the way back and banging against the uh, stop there. Let's make sure it is all the way. I got another inch here. There it is. That's it. So we'll go by the edge of the tool post, which is really close to the edge of the compound. See a little over just about 25 inches to the face of the chuck. Uh, from the tip of the jaws, you could actually machine about 23 inches but you can scoot over a little bit on on here and maybe moving that tool over i don't know you could probably do 30 inch cut and uh they do uh rate it as a uh they didn't know they never did print it on this machine but it's a 14 by 30. So anyway, they say it has uh, that capacity, but they say you can overhang the tailstock four inches, and I did, and that brings it right to the edge of the clamp that holds it, and that's where I got the, the 36. Now, over here at the Monarch 10 EE, I'm going to use this, so uh, I'll start warming it up, and I'll flip the disconnect switch on, the fan comes on, the work light comes on, and uh, the tube filaments will warm up on this thing. And uh, I wanted to show this, the carriage is all the way back. I do have a travel dial which sucks up at least two inches. <laughs> but it, it, it's not much of a hindrance for me, it hasn't been. So th the carriage is all the way back. So I can only do about a foot cut with stuff in this collet, but you move back to, uh, oh, one of the uh, direct mount chucks I have, uh, about 15 inches, see? That's, that's about how far it can cut, 15 inches. Then if you look at the overall, yeah, you can squeeze about 20, 21 inches in there. But what I was going to say is you can actually only cut about 15 inches. Then you got all this space back here that's uh, not as easy to, <laughs> to deal with. And there's a lot more on that axle thing over there. Okay, I just thought I'd point out a couple of uh, shortcomings of uh, shorter lathes. Okay. Hey, back here again at the old Axelson. Now, the Monarch 10 E works like this Axelson, except for the Axelson is all mechanical, and the Monarch 10 E is electronic on how it functions. But let me uh, show you real quick what I'm talking about, how this 
machine reverses, which is unusual for a geared head lathe. The only other lathes I know that do this is uh, Dean Smith and Gray's. And uh, they, they had one of these out at the community college here, it's a bigger one, and uh, this caught my attention because uh, you can cut uh, odd leads and set it up to cut metric threads using uh, the spindle reverse instead of some lathes uh, that are ordered with the toolmaker's lathes have a lead screw reverse, mechanical lead screw reverse, and the little hard inch has uh, mechanical. But let's take a look at this one. Here. Okay, I got this machine warmed up really pretty good and uh, all the lubrication checked out and uh, it's been sitting a little while. I'm not using it right this minute so I have control off. So I'll push control on. You can hear that big transformer starting to kick in. Okay, now I'm going to run the spindle forward and reverse. Let me turn it down to a more moderate speed here. Okay. So here we're going forward. And here we're going reverse. What are we doing? Oh, about 400 RPM. That's okay for this machine. And uh, so I'll flip it uh, to reverse. See, it does the same thing as the uh, as the old Axelson, but it's all electronic. So if you move it to the center position here, that's neutral and it dynamically breaks. So we go forward, no, it's reversed. Then it dynamically breaks in the middle. But you can you can push it all the way through. And it's got an anti-plugging relay in there that keeps it from slamming. And watch it come to a complete stop when I uh, flip it all the way to reverse. See? I go all the way to forward. Comes to a complete stop from that uh, anti-plugging relay. And it prevents the gears in the machine from slamming. And that's really important. I saw a servo drive machine that was DC driven and it didn't buffer. I mean, it went bang when you put it into uh, reverse. And that's not good. Now, the old, the old uh, Axelson, it's kind of got a built-in buffer with the electric motor and the gears and the clutch. So, this machine does it electronically, so it doesn't slam things together. And the VFD naturally does that. They, they tend not to slam. And uh, you can do all kinds of things with the braking on that. Um, but I just wanted to point out that uh, this is a different animal here, but it does the same thing as an axelson electronically. And I'm going to use that to cut some very small fine threads to avoid uh, any error from engaging the half nuts. Like the axle said, you can leave the half nuts engaged and then uh, reverse the machine at the end of the thread. You know, they can engage the, uh, the power feed here.
it's just that easy. Okay, I'm gonna come back in a in a bit and uh, and cut those threads, and maybe I'll, I'll go ahead and load a video and show you uh, what I'm preparing here. And one of the things I do will come right over here is uh, when I operate that machine, I'm going to uh, set up the vise here and put. Uh, I'm going to use carbide, and uh, I'll set up and uh, set the machine up for grinding my carbide turning tools, which are micro 100. Okay. I set the uh, the high speed and the speed compensation after the machines ran for about uh, maybe 45 minutes or an hour. So the machine has a little more warm up to do. And uh, I will be back with another video and I'll cut those screws, okay?